Hello everybody. So today I've actually got a sort of unboxing video uh, for you because I have got this new piece that I've added into my collection. And this is something that I acquired a few weeks, about a month ago now actually. And um, it's an unlabeled piece of 1950s couture. And I had my eye on this piece for a very, very long time because for some reason it always, it felt familiar to me. I feel like I recognized it. And so I kept it, you know, saved. But then I started uh, talking with the seller and finding out about the history of the piece. And um, in the end, she was able to offer me a very reasonable price reduction. So I actually got it for a great price. Um, but then after that, I sent photos of the dress before it arrived to my friend Julian, who worked at the Givenchy archives in Paris. And for those of you who don't know, I actually worked in the Givenchy archives last year as well. Um, but I just sent him the photos of it, just asking if he, he has a, a huge collection of fashion magazines. And I just thought, you know, do you have any photos of this, of this dress in your collection? And with his help, um, I was able to actually find out that this unlabeled dress is actually Givenchy Couture from Spring Summer 1957. So I'm very, very excited. And um, I have actually taken it out of the bag. It arrived in this bag with uh, lots and lots of sellotape. So I did that off camera because sellotape, if you're not careful, can really damage fabric. Um, so I've had a little sneak peek of it, but I haven't looked at it in detail yet. So I'm very, very excited to have a look. Um, so I not only know that this is a Givenchy dress, and it's not only the oldest piece of Givenchy couture that I now own, but uh, when talking to the seller, I found out that it came from the estate of an American socialite. And I asked um, who that was, and she said that this dress came from the Paley estate, um, from the Paley family. And um, some of you may recognize the name Babe Paley, um, and Babe or Barbara Paley was an American socialite, uh, most famous in the 1940s and 50s and 60s. Um, she was married to William S. Paley, who owned CVS. And she is really considered to be a sort of an American fashion icon. And uh, she was also a client of Givenchy. And I've read from a couple of sources that um, sometimes she would buy out entire Givenchy and Balenciaga collections. So clearly this is a woman with uh, a huge number of vintage couture pieces before she, before she passed away. So potentially it was worn by her, although it came from the Paley family, so it could also have come from another, another member of that family as well. Uh, but that's the backstory. Uh, I'm going to stop rambling now and actually start looking at the dress because I'm too excited and I want to look at it. Um, first things first, I'm going to put on some cotton gloves. And basically, the idea behind this is that it protects the pieces from the destructive oils in your hands. Um, some people recommend just washing your hands and making sure they're clean, um, but you can do either. I personally prefer to wear gloves just because, for me, it feels safer for me. Um, let's let's have a look and take off this. Okay, so first things first, as you might be able to see, I'll do some close-up shots as well. This is a yellow, sort of a golden yellow and black silk dress. And it's actually what's known as a bubble dress. And that refers to the silhouette of the skirt. And basically the, the skirt is incredibly voluminous and all that volume and all that fabric is turned under the hem which creates this sort of bubble uh, effect in silhouette, which was very popular in the mid, six, uh, mid 1950s, sorry, um, when this dress is from. So I'm going to start by having a look. And the first thing I really notice is that 
this dress has not one, not two, but three zips in it, um, which seems quite excessive, but all of them serve a function and a purpose. The first one is a zip for the black silk skirt. That. We then also have a zip for the yellow silk layer of fabric and a final zip for this internal boned bodice, which is really there to sort of support the dress and the wearer as well. And so if we open it up, okay. So the first thing you notice in this is how almost architectural the insides of this is. This is definitely, even just looking at it now, the most complex construction of any dress that I, I own in my collection or have seen before. Um, so basically it's got, it's got this boned bodice, which feels like it's on a, a poly fabric. Um, and every seam that we have here is boned. Um, there's a strip of cotton tape and underneath the cotton tape there is what feels to be a strip of spiral steel boning that moves like spiral steel boning as well um, and that's on every single seam. So this is incredibly structured this dress and actually when you think that it's got strips of steel on every single seam it's definitely quite heavy as well. Um, another thing to notice is that every seam is finished by hand and um, normally we would use what's called an overlocker which is a machine that basically just sews the edge of a seam to stop it from fraying. Um, but this is couture and so it's all done by hand. And actually there's, there's a common misconception with couture in that um, a lot of people say that if it's couture, it has to be completely hand sewn. Um, and that's not entirely true. A lot of the finishing is done by hand because that's the sort of highest quality. But all these, um, these bust starts that we see, all these external seams that we see are done on a machine. So there's no sort of law against using a sewing machine in couture, but um, all the finishing is done by hand. Uh, another, okay, another thing we notice is it has got a, what is called a waist tape, a, a stay tape. Um, and basically this is um, a Petersham, a strip of Petersham tape with a hook and eye on each end. And that is hooked up like that. And essentially the purpose of this is when the wearer was putting on the dress, they would get this tape and hook it up at the waist. And that would just take this, that would support the dress and support the weight of the dress while they've ended up the zip. Or in this case, all three of the zips. Um, <laughs> so that's um, a feature in dresses, particularly boned dresses as well. Um, another thing that we have is we have cotton tape going, a thin strip of cotton tape going across the front and across the back. And this goes from the two, in between the two bust darts and in between the two back seams as well. And I'm not entirely sure what they are for. I, th I think these are hanging loops um, so that you can hang it on a hanger uh, instead of using the straps because this is, a, as I say, a heavy dress and that's quite a lot of pressure to put on the straps. Um, and it almost looks as if these straps have, have ripped before and they've been repaired. Um, so, if, yeah, if anyone knows what these are, I think they're probably hanging loops. Normally I only see hanging loops at the waist. Um, but other than that, I've seen in other examples of 1950s could show that they have elastic going under the bust line and around the back. And that uh, just sort of served the same function as the waist stay, so it had an extra, you do up the waist tape 
and then you do it with a bust elastic as well, and that will just support the dress while you while it closes up. But that's not what's going on here. So if anyone knows what that's for, please let me know. Um, and going back to these zippers, all of them have been sewn with a by hand with a prick stitch or a stab stitch, which is another example of a couture finish on a dress. And the workmanship is incredible. Um, at the top here, we have two little darts at the bust, which is what's known as a Hollywood dart. Um, I believe that name came from the, the sort of silhouette that was coming out of Hollywood and the pronounced almost pointed chest. Um, and this dart helped to create that shape. Um, but the construction on this is mind blowing. Um, and I'm just going to quickly move on to the skirt, I might come back to the bodice in a bit. Um, but the first thing you notice with this skirt is that it feels as if it's got a good amount of structure in it. Um, and I imagined that they would have at least one strip of boning around the hem of the dress just to support the amount of fabric coming underneath. Um, but actually, looking at this dress now, you can see that there's a whole separate skirt layer, which is has a series of horizontal bones going all the way down. You can just see if you look through down this bit here. And essentially what that would have been for is, is to create a, a crinoline or, or a hoop skirt to really support the weight of the skirt and to give that that rounded bubble skirt um, and I was not expecting that at all so that is incredible and I've not seen that before either in person so that's very exciting for me to see it looks so just from looking there are four layers to the skirt the first is a silk slip which would have been worn against the, the skin, so it would have been nice and comfortable. The second layer is, as I say, this, this little crinoline layer. I'm just gonna take off my glove, my hands are clean, just to try and feel this fabric, because it looks to me like it is a synthetic fabric, and it certainly feels like it as well. It feels like it's got that, that synthetic, even plastic, um, woven into it, which would really help to support the dress. I'm not entirely sure what exactly the fabric is, um, <clears throat> but it definitely feels synthetic and it's incredibly stiff. And there are two layers of it, it's doubled up. And then on top of that, we have the yellow silk layer, which is um, continued from the bodice. Um, and this is sewn flat, so it's got almost sewn, sewn as if it's an A-line, um, sewn with panels, as opposed to being gathered, and that's to help reduce bulk. But then on top of that, and I'll put my glove back on now, on top of that we've got this um, final layer of sheer black silk fabric, and this is decorated with these beautiful floral appliques and this scalloped trim going all the way up and down the skirt and this skirt I'm actually going to turn it over just to look at it from the front just carefully turn it over so this skirt is this top layer of fabric has been almost ruched up and then at certain points it's been sewn down by hand um, in little little areas we can see one there a little hand sewn detail there and that's basically to create this this three-dimensional effect and really increase the amount of volume in the skirt um, another great detail that i've just seen here is this black silk ribbon which is really not serving any structural purpose. It's more decorative, but 
the way it's been placed almost makes it look like this ribbon is the thing that's holding the skirt up and sort of gathering all this fabric and ruching all this fabric up. It looks as if it's the ribbon doing that, but actually that's just very clever craftsmanship. And you can feel the amount of structure in this skirt. I've never seen anything like it. And um, we see here the fabric has been turned under, under the hem, and then it's got this strip of silk organza, which has been doubled up, and then it comes to the uh, the silk slip. And the amount of work in this, and it's it's literally like studying a piece of architecture. Um, I'm going to try and, and hold this up just so you can get an idea of what this dress is supposed to look like. I'm going to hold it from the waist and not from the straps just to protect it. Um, but essentially it's this dropped waist yellow silk bodice and then this incredibly voluminous um, bubble skirt made from black silk, black sheer silk. And um, perhaps through years of storage or hanging, it appears to have been flattened a little bit and a lot of this fabric has dropped. Um, but that is something that can be restored. But it's also incredibly heavy, um, but still holds this amazing shape. I am very, very excited. And I have to actually admit that normally Yellow and black isn't my favourite colour combination, normally. Um, to me it kind of looks like a giant bumblebee. <laughs> but I love bumblebees and, and, you know, why not? I think now seeing it in person, it's so, it's so difficult to convey on camera how beautiful it actually is. Um, and even the silhouette will not be to everyone's taste because this really came from Givenchy's experimental phase. Uh, so in 1956 and 1957, he was really uh, trying out all these different silhouettes, including the bubble skirt, the sack dress. So again, not to everyone's taste per se, but undeniably a incredible example of that period of fashion when this was really sort of the pinnacle of, of French couture is, is this, firstly in terms of construction and also this sort of innovative new silhouette which hadn't really been seen before and, um, and to be able to, to hold that and see that is very, very exciting for me. Um, I'm definitely going to try and include a lot of close-up shots of this dress, um, but right now I'm going to put it back in um, a lovely archival storage. Um, but this is, a I'm trying not to, to be too to be too nerdy about this, about how excited I am to see it. Um, but this is very exciting for me and I'm, I hope that there will be other people out there who maybe appreciate construction or couture, or couture or vintage fashion that will be just as excited to see this as I am. But in the meantime, I, I hope you're all staying safe and well and that you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask away and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And um, I hope you have a lovely day and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Cut!